Okay, so I crashed the Futon 2 a day or so ago and didn't realize that the VTX antenna got compromised. So I'm thinking all is good, but as you can see, it is definitely not good. Now, I wasn't sure what was wrong with it, but I had to bring it in and land it. And upon inspecting it, I found that the VTX antenna jiggled a bit right here. Now, I've since fixed it and reinforced it, but the damage has already been done to the VTX. So it looks like I'm going to have to replace the VTX on my Futon 2. Luckily, I got just the VTX. So today we are taking a look at the full-sized version of the HGLRC's Forward MT VTX. It is a 25, 100, it also has pit mode, 200, 400, 800 milliwatt switchable VTX. Now I just did a review of the mini version of this VTX, which is a 20 by 20 millimeter, 600 milliwatt powered VTX with the two millimeter screw mounting holes. So the full size version has the 30 by 30 millimeter mounting holes with the three millimeter screw holes. Now it does have the same IRC tramp protocol. So you can change the channels, the frequency and the power output via the OSD menu. And it also has a single button to change the channels, the frequency and the power output. It also has a microphone, so if you are far away, you can still listen to the sound of your quadcopter, which helps out a lot. Now, it is sporting a MMCX connector, which I think all VTX, no matter what the size of the VTX, should come with as standard, since the UFL connectors, well, those antennas on these connectors that can just get dislodged so easily. And just in case the wiring harness connector comes off or gets damaged, there are actual standalone solder pads to directly solder the wires. Now, we have indicator LED lights to display the channel, the frequency, and the power output that it is currently on. Now, the OSD display takes care of that, but if you are setting it up without a better flight, flight controller, for example, like on an airplane or an RC car or something like that, that you are going to use this VTX on, then it is nice to navigate through the channels, the frequency and the power output via the LED indicator lights using the single button. Now the heat dissipation plate is built in right on top of the VTX to keep it from overheating. And it will come with a six wire wiring harness, two more wires than the mini version. Now the two, extra wires is another ground wire and the five volt out wire to power up a camera. But if you already have the camera powered up via the flight controller or the PDB, then these two extra wires can be removed. So you will be left with just four wires. So it is very simple to install. So the red wire goes to the VBAT or the positive pad right on the battery itself. Input voltage is 6 to 26 volts, so 2 to 6S battery. The black wire is the ground wire, and the yellow wire will go to the video out. And the white wire here is the RX wire. This one you will need to solder it to an empty TX pad on an available UART on the flight controller for the IRC tram protocol. So it also comes with a dipole whip antenna with the MMCX connector. An MMCX connector, a right angle one, to an SNA connector cable, and also the manual. So it will come in at seven grams. So the measurements are 37.1 millimeter in length. 25.2 millimeter in width and the thickest point will be 5.8 millimeters. And here in the ports tab in beta flight you will need to activate the VTX IRC trend protocol on the peripherals corresponding to the TX pad that you have soldered on the RX wire 2 which in my case was the UART 6 
TX pad. And here in the video transmitter tab, what you will need to do is click right here, mark this, and this will take you over to GitHub where you can download the IRC tram protocol and load from file once you have saved it to a notepad and insert it in here and all of this will appear like magic all of the frequencies that are all available to you and you might want to configure these milliwatt settings there's five different settings that you can set this transmitter and you can choose the band the channel and the power output right from Betaflight. And here in the OST menu, you can go into the Features tab, and under the Tram Protocol, you can go ahead and change the, the band, and also the channels, and the power output as well. Okay, we're out on the field to test out the VTX here, and it is set to 25 milliwatts. Main screen is the head play goggles, and the picture-in-picture -picture is the Fat Shark goggles. And since I have a GPS module on the quadcopter, and the satellite count dipped down below 6, I'm getting a rescue not available warning here. And there we go, 10 satellites, here we go. Let's go towards the 150 meter bush. And there's the 150 meters. 200 meter bush right down below. 250 meter marker right down below. 300 meter marker right down below. Hey, markers are pretty accurate. And we turn around at about 375 meters. And we are starting to head back. Not bad. Oop, rescue not available once again. Satellite dipped down below six. So behind the car now. And there's a little bit of static here and there, but it's not bad for 25 milliwatts. Oop, there's a bit more static. So going right above where the dead zone is and it is performing pretty well. And the fat sharks are doing a lot better than the head plate goggles because it has diversity modules. All in all, not bad for 25 milliwatt setting here. So coming in for a landing and we shall switch over to 100 milliwatts. All right, we are good to go. Save and exit. And here we go once again. And it is now set to 100 milliwatts. There's a car passing by there. Let's wait a little bit. And also want to circle around myself to make sure the home direction arrow is functioning correctly. There we go. Looks like it knows where home is. And once again, checking it out, going the distance. A little bit of static. There's the 150 meter bush. And we make the same rounds. Those markers are pretty accurate. So we're at almost 300 meters 
and that road should be about 400 meters and there you go we go beyond it it's a little bit of snowflakes but the fat sharks are doing a lot better and check it out we turn around right about 580 meters massive amount of static right there on the turnaround a little bit of snow but not bad 580 meters 100 milliwatt setting i don't think you'll ever go 580 meters on the 100 meter setting but it is nice See, coming down behind the car oh some static here so just about the same amount of static behind the car a little bit of snow here and there that is to be expected so higher power setting you probably get rid of those static perhaps those uh, cloudy hazy diagonal lines that is probably due to some kind of interference from the VTX flight controller the receiver all stacked up over there will probably disappear if you put like a capacitor on the battery pads so circling around on top and it is doing fine here so coming down all in all very nice at 100 milliwatts and usually that's where i normally set my stuff to about 100 or 200 milliwatts i don't need anything stronger than that for how i fly and where i fly so switching over to 200 milliwatt next okay 200 milliwatt now and establishing home point making sure the home arrow is pointing correctly and taking the same route 150 meter bush 200 to 50 300 and 400 meters slightly less snow this time and turning around right around the same distance there and not as much static this time at 200 milliwatts and check it out just a beautiful day here in paradise just gorgeous there's actually grass on the desert floor now and we go behind the car once again and we're still getting some static behind of the car going overhead overhead seems to have no issues at all even on the 25 milliwatt setting so there you have it 200 milliwatt setting tested not bad at all okay our final run at this field here and it is set to 400 milliwatts now so once again making sure the home direction arrow is good and it is so let's go same routine here 
150, 200, and so on. Hopefully it does better at this 400 milliwatt setting. And here comes the 400 meter road. Not bad, so far so good. Little bit of snow right around here. And turning around at about 620 meters. Lots of snow from the turnaround. And it is good. All right. So we have GPS module on this quad cutter. So let's check out the GPS rescue function. There we go. The GPS rescue. We're pretty high up there, above 100 meters in altitude. And going back home. All right, taking back controls, diving towards the rear of the car. And let's check it out behind of the car at 400 milliwatts. Looks like it's doing better behind a car at 400 milliwatts. Oh yeah, much better. All right, very nice. Okay, overhead should be no issues. Oh yeah, definitely 400 milliwatts is outperforming the rest. Below it, much better out here in this field. So this will be the last test at this field. I wanna take it home and check it out at home for the 800 milliwatt testing. Okay, we're at home now and I'm sitting inside of the garage. So I do expect a bit more static here and there. But here I want to test out the penetration quality of this VTX. So going to the side of the house, turning around a little bit of static that's not bad going to the other side less walls to penetrate pretty good let's see if I can go around the house now, I've never done this before so taking it easy and yep, yeah, no problems. Nice. One more time. Yeah, there's a little bit more static, but that's actually not that bad at all. There you go. You can fly in the backyard sitting in the garage. <laughs> Pretty good. Terrorize a neighborhood. <laughs> so 800 milliwatts is great when you are flying a bando and want to penetrate some walls. Very nice. Or just be sitting in your garage and fly around your house. I normally just fly around in the front yard, but now yeah, I want to be flying around the house now. <laughs> so there it is, guys. The HGLRC Forward MT Full Size VTX. So if you want to check it out for yourself, 
The link to the product is down below. So that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Be safe and fly safe, everybody. And we'll see you again next time.